so good morning and welcome to all the students present in this video lecture this is our third lecture uh, of the subject that is energy conservation and management in this lecture we are going to discuss the energy scenario of an india so in line with this uh, energy scenario uh, we are going to start the today's session and that is our third session so before starting the today's session just we have a brief overview about the topic that we have discussed in the lecture 1 and 2 in lecture 1 we have started with the review of our syllabus and the applicabilities of the syllabus in a professional career of mechanical engineering students and then we start with the basics of uh, energy so energy is defined as an ability to do work or the capacity to do work and then we know that we have discussed the, some of the points uh, regarding with the economic developments of a country and how the energy is contributed for the economic development of a country and then we start with the basics of the force energy and power then we have discussed the force under the action of force the objects is move so motion is there and the mass of object is measured in kg and then we have defined the work done then we have discussed the case 2 and again we have defined the work done and then finally we get the definitions of work done that force into the displacement in the directions of application of force that is called as a work and then we have know the unit of the work done is joule and energy is same as the work done because the definition of energy is ability or capacity to do the work and the power that is a third quantity that we define so power is rate of doing work that is uh, w divided by t so we get the f into v which is a joule per second and here you get the watt that is the unit of power then after discussion of this uh, we have say that in the case of developing country like in india the energy sector assumes a critical importance in view of ever increasing energy needs require the huge investment to meet them so this uh, with this line we have started with the uh, various unit of energy so we have gone through the various unit like the joule btu that is a british thermal units then kilowatt hour then calories and ton of oil equivalents then we have established the relation between the different units of energy then in next lecture number 2 we are discussing the source of energy uh, so we have discussed the uh, types of energy in that primary energy sources and the secondary so primary we have defined the primary energy source that is a source that are freely available or we can extract from the layer of earth and the primary uh, common primary energy sources are the coal oil and natural gases then secondary Uh, it is the source that cannot be directly exist in the nature but we need to produce or we need to transform from the primary so now uh, we have discussed this uh, all the process the primary sources are there then the transformation process and then finally we get the secondary and why the transformation is needed because the primary energy cannot be directly consumed by the end users that we have discussed in the previous lecture so uh, after that we have discussed the commercial and non commercial then we have the difference between the commercial and non commercial renewable and non renewable conventional non conventional after that we just take the some of the uh, <clears throat> idea about the energy scenario or just we have discussed the little bit about the scenario so student have uh, give me the different answers and different views that scenario means the we have to study what we have done in the past what is the current trends are going on and what can we predict for the future so that point we have discussed in the lecture number 2 and today we are going to discuss uh, the energy scenario so now in previous lecture uh, we have discussed the primary energy sources and the secondary and we know that the secondary energy is generated from the primary energy sources so for any kind of the end users they must require the primary energy 
primary energy we have some transformation process we get the secondary and secondary energies get consumption so if you want to know that how much energies are used by the end user so we have to measure the consumption of primary energy sources so here in this slide i have certain graph this is a pie chart which shows the contributions of various kind of primary energy source to satisfy the requirement or the need of end users and this data is of year 2007 so it is very old data because it is a 13 years old data uh, 13 years old data and i get this data from the uh, one of the important source that is called as iea and here this whole contributions means the total consumptions of primary energy in whole world this is a whole world and it consumes the unit of 504 e joule e joule means exajoule and 1 exajoule equals to 10 to the power 18 so uh, suppose we know that kilo that is 10 to the power 3 mega is 10 to the power 6 then later on it is uh, going on and we get the exa and exa is 10 to the power 18 so can you assume that how much amount of energy is consumption by the whole world in the year of 2007 and this iea is the agency which publishes the data of energy for every countries in the world and india becomes a permanent member of this iea in the year of 2017 till that we are not a permanent association member of this iea so this is the fact and now uh, after this so from this we can uh, we can able to conclude that the coal oil natural gas are the major primary source which is consumed by the end users and if you see here the red mark which shows a 10% of renewable energy means the renewable energy and hydro energies are contributed at very small percentage where nuclear is also a 6 percentage now what next because why i am emphasizing on this uh, percentage like 10 percentage then we have used the 2 percentage of hydro and 6 percentage of nuclear because from the consumption of this kind of energy sources the pollution that is major contributors that is a co2 emitted is less compared to all these three that is coal oil and natural gases and second things the world is majorly depends or the dominant sources in the world primary energy source that is oil means in whole world the consumption of oil is major compared to other resources in the primary energy so this chart is called as a primary energy mix of world now we are going to learn the same data see students i am not taking the latest data in this presentation because we don't have an exact uh, idea or exact statistics for the energy in the open literature i also want to show some of the uh, latest literatures that is published in the year of 2019 but here i have the perfect data for the world as well as for the india so now after this analysis of primary energy mix of an uh, world we are going to analyze the primary energy consumptions in the year of 2007 and since uh, see here the whole world is consumed the 504 exajoule and our india is only consumed the 24 exajoule and if you go for the populations then india is contributed how much uh, by how much percentage so uh, the indian population is contributed or it is a 20% of a uh, world a uh, world populations if you are discussing in the year of 2007 the whole world is consumed the 504 and among that india is only contributing the 24 so what is the percentage so it is a uh, 24 divided by 504 you get near about a uh, 4 percentage 4 or 4.5 like that. in 2007 our population is contributed by only 15 percentage 
although you can uh, have the gap because our population is 15% and we consume only the 5% or near to 4.5% of the energy which is consumed by whole world now i am going to uh, show you the development strategies and how much percentage of consumption is increases so that we discuss uh, from the uh, latest statistics so see here this is the document which i come across and this is the energy statistics which is published by our uh, indian government in the year of 2019 so this is 26th issue of uh, the energy statistics 2019 so what are the contents are given over here see in previous first lecture we have discussed the installed generating capacity in india so that that is the second is the wind power potentials at 100 meter uh, aggregate lands is given the refineries and petroleum products and pipelines then the energy statistics highlights of energy statistics 2019 then reserve and potential for the generations then installed capacities and capacity utilizations then the chapter 3 is production of commercial energy sources then foreign trade is also given over here that is a uh, trades in the coal crude oils petroleum products and electricities and the availabilities of energy sources in india that is raw coal crude oils then finally our interest is also that that is called as a consumption of energy sources and here the sector wise energy consumption is there see this kind of data is very important and basis on this kind of data you can generate the strategy for the your economic development for the energy development in different particular sectors suppose the whole energy which is con consumed by in india it is in uh, consum it, 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 it is consumed in different sectors and if you know the sector wise data then you can find it out which sector is performing less which sector is consuming more so where the technology transfer is required where we need to uh, apply certain policies for the improvement in the consumption for the energy efficient equipments we need to provide like that so this kind of analysis will comes from the energy scenario means that's why we need to learn the energy scenario and here it is uh, there this uh, chapter 7 is the energy balance the world populations and consumption of crude oil and uh, and the energy indicators it is also there so let us we go for first it is very important that in previous lecture we have come uh, come to know that in uh, install capacity of uh, install generating capacity of in india is more than a uh, 3.4 lakhs so here it is map of india is given jammu kashmir and all the states are given and there is a different colors are used so this blue color is for the hydro power stations in india then second red color is there for the thermal power station installed in the whole india state wise then green is for the nuclear then the uh, yellow is also there and total capacity is there so now you can see the central unlocated and here the total numbers are there so total number is more than 3.4 lakhs megawatt is there so this is the one idea we get where our power station is located and from which state the what are the units are generating and what is the consumption of the because transmission is also a major important things huge losses in transmission line so that's why this uh, map is needed and that is analysis then second map is given over here which shows the potentials of a uh, wind power generations so if you see over here here very uh, green regions are there so uh, the gujarat has a huge potentials for the power generating capacities from wind energy now uh, the refineries it is not our interest currently so now we are going to analyze certain another graphs which is given over here in the statistics see here it is important export is there it is also from 2008 to 2070 usage of energy is there but we go for this uh, graph estimated reserves of coal in india so total reserve currently it is a 319.4 billion tons 
at that much amount of call is reserved as on the 31st of the march uh, 2018 see it is statistics of 2019 still it contains the old data because as you know this is a data which can published by the central government so it take a time so currently we do not have the latest data of 2020 or 19 likewise so whatever data I, I get that i want to share with you the estimated results in lignite as all of you know that lignite is a major source of in the solid fuels that is a coal fuel in our india but which contains the more than uh, 27 to 30 percent of ash and that's why we have to depend on the coal which is imported from the other countries then petroleum and natural is there it is also estimated reserve crude oil in india as well as the uh, other uh, products see here in, in gujarat we have the 20 percent in rajasthan we have three percent western offshore it is 40 percent in assam it is 27 and eastern of uh, offshore it is seven percent andhra pradesh one percentage so this is likewise this is natural gas then here the sector wise estimated potentials of renewable power as on this so see major contributor for the renewable is uh, very famous that is a solar there is a huge investment are done in these uh, solar sectors and wind power is there as, as well as the others so in others if there is a small hydropower stations then biomass power co-generation and the waste to the energies means from the agriculture waste we are generating the energy this is the uh, state-wise estimated potential of renewable. So if you go and uh, see Gujarat is contributed 11% uh, which is the highest among all that. And uh, who is responsible for that? Can anyone know that? Why the Gujarat is contributed more? In the year of 2009, the our state government uh, is launching one policies that is called as a solar policies of Gujarat if you search uh, if you do the Google it 2009 our solar policies are launching and due to which there is a huge investment of the different multinational companies have developed their warehouses their uh, solar plate power I mean uh, manufacturing of solar plates in Gujarat and that's why the huge investment as well as the huge amount of energy which is generated from the solar as all of you know that there is a huge geographical potentials are there in the field of wind in the field of solar now we are moving further so see here the data is there for the state esti uh, state wise estimated call so now uh, you can refer this ppt i'm not going much because it can uh, con uh, have contained the more than 123 pages so I'm not going in uh, too much depth, but just I want to focus on what is the scenarios are going on in the energy sectors in India as well as in the whole world. Now we come back to the our PPT. I can share this PDF with you so that you can have some concluding remarks and you can have some latest data. But the end uses of the energy, why we are using the energy. So here I have listed some of the end use of energy. So for the cooking, what is the services? Food cook is that we have used the chula stoves and we use the different primary energy like coal, the natural gases like that. We use for the lighting purpose, illuminations is our uh, services and we have incandescent lamp, then fluorescent and the CFL. Then we are using the energies in transport sectors. Uh, for the distance travel, we have the cycles, we have car, we have trains, motor, motorcycles and bus. Then motor power for the running of any shaft that we are using the motor. Then cooling, we have space which is cooled. We have used the fan, air conditioning, refrigerations, etc. For the heating purpose, we have fluid heated like a boiler and geysers and that. So this is the end energy use. Now, this is oldest data we have discussed. So now in scenario, it is most famous question of GPU, which is asked that explain Indian energy scenario. So now from you have to start from the primary energy mix. You have to uh, prepare the pie chart for the primary. You have to write something which are the dominant sources of energy, which is used uh, there. 
for the serving the various need of and the energy sectors or energy con consumer in the india then you have to discuss about the call supply so see first sentence is very important call dominates the energy mix in india which contributes near about 40 to 45 likewise percentage of total primary energy productions over the year it has been marked increasing in the share of the natural gases in the primary so you have to get this kind of data you have to write this kind of conclusion with the new statistics and you have to write this kind of the scenario for an india and you need to prepare in your word it is not like that but what are the points that you need to include that you need to include call supply then how much energy means the reserves are there for the call then uh, we have this uh, how much percentage are increases then here one word is used which is very important and it is the it is reserve to production ratio it is generally called as r by p ratio and which is very important and which can indicates how much production is there and how much reserves of coal or any sources are there in your country and from that we can have that how much energy is our reserve sources are there and how much it produce so this is a very important terms and you also need to mention in the energy scenario wherever you are writing down yes here the definition is that if the reserve remain at the end of the year are divided by the production in that years the result is length of the time that remaining reserves would last if the production were continue at that level if we have this reserves and we have this amount of productions so how many long lasting these sources are there in the uh, our uh, country this is very important terms you need to remember it then india is a fourth largest producer of coal and lignite in the world so this kind of statistics are there it is not current data so you need to read uh, the indian statistics and from that uh, we have to write some conclusions so now this is oil supply so you have to write see jetla jetla primary energy source ni andar apna energy contributors say that we need to describe on every of this coal supply then we have oil supply then natural gas supplies and nuclear power fossil fuels and everything we need to uh, give the idea about that so this is uh, you, in this way you need to write the energy scenario i think uh, now you understand what you have to write in the energy scenario i shall stop over here with this energy scenario and thank you for attending this class